Hearing loss in one ear? What should you do? That's our topic today on Ask the Hearing Doctors. Hi, I'm Jim Cuddy, and this is Ask the Hearing Doctors, and I'm joined today by Dr. Anna Anzola, Dr. Linda Himmler, Doctors of Audiology with Hearing Doctors, the Washington, D.C. area's highest-rated audiology practice with over 1,500 five-star reviews. Anna, Linda, great to see you both. Great to see you. All right, so today we're talking about unilateral hearing loss, or UHL. What exactly is that? Most people will have symmetrical hearing loss, meaning the hearing loss is the same in both ears. Unilateral hearing loss is when one hearing ear's hearing is, this, is normal and the other ear's, ear's hearing is a little bit different. It could be full deafness, it could be a partial hearing loss, or it could be something in between. Is this a common, less common sort of thing? Much less common than mm -hmm. you think, but it's very critical to get it evaluated. Um, it is one of the hardest ones to define because I think that that patient goes the longest because they're just relying with one ear and they can go the longest. So it could be um, something, something simple, like uh, something like an ENT can actually do something for it. Um, or it could be something a lot more serious, like a tumor, something that can be removed or monitor. Is it something that can be corrected in the audiologist's office? Often not, and we want that medical clearance because we want to make sure that this is, this is atypical, so this is not the most normal thing we see, but it, it has different treatment plans after we get that medical clearance. So let's talk about some of the symptoms. I mean, obviously, in, in, in the, the bigger picture of things, you said the symptom, of, you know, not as good in one ear, but you're okay in the other, but are there other things, signs of, of, of UHL that people could look out for? Some people will talk about oral fullness, where their ear feels like it's in a cloud or they notice that when they drive, they don't hear as well on one side versus the other, so that they end up being the passenger, they hear better, but when they drive, they don't hear the passenger as well. So there's certain things that'll come up. Sometimes they'll be ringing just in that ear. So there are other symptoms that may go along with that, so it's important to ask the right questions when they come in. I would imagine, because we've often, you know, we've talked about the other effects of hearing loss on, on, on a person, but balance. Sure. And knowing which direction a noise is coming from could be critical. Sure, directionality, localization, that can be compromised. Um, we often see patients who tell me that, you know, when I was laying on my one side mm -hmm. and I couldn't hear the TV, it again, that's a sign that something's not normal and you get it checked out. Are there other things that, that I mean, could it be genetic disorders? I mean, are there other things that, that might cause this? And so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe there are some genetic disorders. Often that they are genetic disorders, they're often identified when they're young. Um, there are some that do, do develop as they get older. Uh, there's other type things that run in families like um, otosclerosis, and that could also be identified as a unilateral hearing loss. Now, you talked about somebody gets medically cleared. Mm -hmm. Once that has happened, are there things that, that you guys can do here in the office? Oh, for sure, you can either aid that one ear that's compromised or apply something that we call a cross or a bi-cross system so that's wearing two hearing aids um, so putting amplification on the on the bad ear and, and having the other transmit the sound what about counseling for somebody that has this i mean obviously not a lot of people have it um, it's 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 not normal it's not it's not the typical type of hearing loss that people might be accustomed to what sort of counseling can you offer and, and what sort of realistic expectations can somebody have? With a cross or a bi-cross system, um, their, their localization of sound will be different than it would be if you have um, normal hearing or hearing a hearing aid on that side because you aren't able to localize the sound because it's still all coming into one side. So you still have to look for where sound is coming from. You also have to, you may not do as well in noisy places because you're not really aiding that ear, so your reference points still aren't in line. It's still one ear doing the, doing the work. Um, but the pluses of that are you can go to the movie theater and have somebody sit on that bad side. So you have to get your brain around it so that it, it understands that I'm hearing Mary here, but she's actually over here. So there's some of that kind of counseling that we do. And often, I'm not your experience is when they come back in two weeks, they go, you know, I'm really not hearing that well in that ear. And you literally have to re-explain, you're not going to hear here, you're going to hear everything here. And then the, the brain just takes a little bit longer to get an idea of how it's going to function. So the bottom line is, as we've talked about with anybody, you, you should always be getting your ears checked. But if you have some sort of 
get in to see a doctor of audiology to get your ears checked because that's where it has to start. Yeah, absolutely. And there are other options besides the hearing aid. It could be a surgical solution as well. Uh, but again, it's just the importance of getting it tested. Don't ignore signs like, why can't I hear on this side? And why, why is one mm -hmm. bright and the other one sort of muted? Um, that's, that's a sign to come in and, and see us. Okay. Anna, Linda, thank you both so much for your time. If you're in the Washington metropolitan area and you'd like to schedule an appointment with hearing doctors, click the link in the description or visit hearingdoctors.com.